Yeah, okay, Vishal. Actually, myself, uh, uh, my name is Satish. I'm having uh, 10 years of experience into the IT industry. Uh, almost okay. hundreds of years into Java J2E technologies. I have implemented many web applications and enterprise applications. So, on the last two and a half years, I'm working on the big data technologies like uh, Hadoop and the Hadoop ecosystem and uh, Spark, Cassandra, Scala and some other different uh, uh, tools I'm working now. Okay, yeah. currently I'm working with a product development company, as in Big Data Architect. Okay, so actually we have asked for your question uh, to learn uh, Big Data, Hadoop, Hadoop and Big Data, uh, any other tool. Uh, the main requirement is that either one of the programming languages like Java Basics okay. or SQL knowledge is required. If you have the both the knowledge, both the things Java and SQL, it will be very good. Even SQL knowledge is there, then it will be advantage to learn the Hadoop and uh, doing the Hadoop analytics. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. For Hadoop analytics, do we need Java? Sorry. For Hadoop analytics, do we need Java? No, not required. Not really required. But we need R language. Yeah, R language, if you have the R language, then it will be very good. SQL is also good, fine. You can do, it's based on the tool which you are using. If you use the uh, Hadoop Hive, then you can do it in the uh, analytics by using the queries or the SQL queries. Not exactly oh. SQL queries, it will be a little bit different. Uh, Hive query language is there, which is almost 85, 80 to 90 percent similar to the SQL. Okay, okay. So you can understand very easily the Hive queries, but if you want to go into the um, analytics in R language, basically R is the tool which can be provided the uh, graphical and uh, uh, graphical notation analytics purpose. You can create the charts and the graphs and other things. Yes. Uh, okay? okay. But uh, there are different other tools are available to, for the analytical purpose. So you can use the SQL notation language. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So and I am advising you if you have the time, just learn the basics of the Java. It will not take maybe two to three weeks time. Just don't touch entire Java. I will give you the some concepts of Java which is required in the uh, big data industry, and I will give you the some website URLs also which can be very easy to understand for the new people. Okay. So the basic learners of the job. Okay. I, I will share you those things. Uh, nowadays, right now we have the SQL knowledge is there and you have the, some data knowledge is also available there, right, with you. What, what kind of data knowledge are you talking about? Any data. In, in industry, in general, in outside the industry, what is data, how, why data is coming on the servers, like that. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Okay, that's, that, that's basic knowledge. And yes. you know how many years of experience total not, not in IT and non-IT? In IT, one year. Other than IT, uh, six months in biomedical company. Okay. So, close to two years of experience, right? Yes. Okay, fine. Thank you. So before going to the uh, what is Hadoop, I would like to give some idea of big data. Okay, just by looking into this name big data, what you are thinking in your context? A very huge amount of data. Okay, fine. So as for your context, it's a huge amount of data, right? Huge data. Huge data means how much is huge data? Uh, in some terabytes. terabytes. So basically we will calculate the data like uh, KBs, MBs, right? Mm, okay. GBs. Next. Petabyte. Okay. And the exabyte. Jettabyte. And jettabyte. This is the, uh, how, this how we can calculate the data. So from where exactly you are expecting is a huge data? From MB or GB or TB, where exactly? From TB. From TB. Yeah, yeah, for your context, from TB onwards, it will be a big data, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why not GB? For that, we have SQL to use, right? 
yeah. GB and all. So, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, correct. Uh, SQL and other things who can be managed with the GB of data, right? Yes. Okay, that's fine. Actually, there is no particular definition for big data as of now. So people will talk about, somebody will talk about petabytes of data is a big data, terabyte of data is big data. Somebody will talk about different structures of data can be a big data like that. Okay. Okay. But basically there is no specific example is there in the big data. Let's take, uh, if I use the GMA for an example, do you have any idea how much data I can send in a GMA? No. Yeah, I can send maybe 20 to 25 MB of data only I can send to the Gmail. Oh. See, if I try to send 100 MB of data in a single Gmail, it cannot be processed. It cannot be possible. Yes. Okay. That means here, this 100 MB data is a not a big data, right? Nowadays, it's a very small 100 MB, right? Yes. But this 100 MB is a big data in terms of Gmail. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Getting my point? Yes, yes. That's, yes. Yeah. If I take any SQL systems or Oracle and the other systems, it can be processed with GBs of data. Okay. If I give uh, terabytes or petabytes of data, TBs of data, it can be difficult, right? Yes. Now, terabytes of data is a big data in terms of secret. If I take some many ETL systems, advanced ETL systems, these systems can process up to terabytes of data also. Yes. Maybe one terabyte or ten terabyte. If I give hundreds of terabytes of data or a huge amount of another petabytes of data, it will be very difficult, right? Yes. See here what I'm explaining, what I'm trying to explain is the the data which is having some particular amount of data is a big data in terms of some particular infrastructure, software, or tool, or something else. Okay. Okay. So here, the 100 MB of data is a big data in terms of Gmail, but terabyte of data is a big data in terms of SQL. But here, petabyte of data is a huge big data in terms of ETL system. Yes. Because of these systems are not able to process this data. Yes. Yes. Correct. So that is the reason. But here, 100 MB of data is you cannot process in Gmail. But there are lot of options are available to send this data, right? Yes. Dropbox, Google Box, there are different things. So we need not worry about this particular point. But when you come to the <coughs> terabytes or petabytes of data, after petabytes of data, ETL system, there is no particular tool is available to process the huge amount of data which is more than terabytes and petabytes, right? Yes. So here we need to think about some knowledge, something else which can be store the data and process the data. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> this is the, uh, we can say like this, we can say the big data means which can be not able to process then it can be a big data process. And one more thing, if you want, if you talk about big data, immediately we need to talk about three Bs. Okay. okay. One is the volume of data. Volume is nothing but what we have discussed right now. The huge amount of data, petabytes or terabytes or gigabytes of data. What does it mean? Okay. Ah. Three Bs and next, and next. Terabytes of data, huge amount of data. Okay. Variety. variety of data, variety of data, in the variety of data there are three different varieties of data is there, structured data, data, structured data, do you have any idea about these things? Actually, two weeks back I attended uh, Adobe class, the basic thing what you are saying now. Okay, okay, got it. So when you come to a structured data, it will be a it can be a table or CSV file or any other structured data, Excel files and other files, right? If you have an idea, right? CSV comma separated value file, it will be, you know, table, right? Normal tables. Yes, yes. So this thing, this thing, this can be called as this structure. When you come to the semi-structured data, the data can be a, some part of that is a structured data, some part of that is maybe unstructured data. Okay. Okay, like XML file, 
json file there are different formats are there and next is the constructor data which is very huge amount of data is getting in the market right now it can be a binary data signals and uh, maybe mo movies pics and so on so it can be any other format and even it can be a normal text also these are the unstructured, this comes from unstructured data. Nowadays, the data is which is coming to the servers is more than 80% is the unstructured data and complex data. That much data is coming right now. Okay. okay. Next one is the velocity of data. Velocity is, the, velocity is nothing but processing the data, performing the data. Once you get the data, once you store the data into the servers, next thing is the processing the data, right? Yes. So the velocity of data. Once you get the huge amount of data and different varieties of data, the processing also a very big challenge. Mm. By using the velocity of data, we can uh, do the uh, we can process the data in a different ways. Okay. Just let me show a uh, few more uh, visualizations of big data. Are you able to see this uh, slide? Yes. Yes. So basically, this slide is showing. Uh, five exabytes of data in this picture from the starting point of the computer to 2003 in the last maybe you can take maybe 50 to 100 years time the total data which is available in the worldwide is five exabytes of data five exabytes will be this one okay after terabyte and petabyte okay okay after that in the 10 year span of time from 2003 to 2012, the data is increased 500 times on top of 5 exabytes of data. Okay. See, it's a completely uh, huge increase, right? Yes. Exponential growth of data. Yes. 500 times in 10 years, that means 2.7 gigabytes of data. But as per expectations from 13, 14, 15, these three years the data is increased again three times on top of 500 times of data okay. within three years just think yourself how much huge amount of data is generating every year every month and every day even every minute and second right yes so basically this uh, structured data other data is coming these are different different sources Okay, if you take Facebook, YouTube, all these commerce websites and social media, it just is a amount of fast Okay, Vishal, I'm getting my voice back. Let me check it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Still, still I'm getting it. Yeah. Can you put on yeah. mute? Can you put on mute? Oh, I did that. Hello? Yeah, okay. Now, go on. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. These are the different processes we are getting. We are getting. We are getting. Oh, still the same problem. Still the same problem. I, I did put on mute. Hello? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Are you still able to hear it? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting yeah, it. I'm getting it. back. Even now? Hello? Hello? Yes, I'm still here. Yes, I'm still here. Actually, I called uh, using my phone. Okay. But okay. even on uh, this thing, I can still... I think uh, both the uh, in phone and laptop. Can you mute one of the system? Can you mute one of the system? Uh, give, me, give me, I'll try to mute the laptop one, okay? Give me a minute. Okay. Okay.
Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. 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 Yes, uh, I'm getting still. I'm getting still. Uh, okay, ma'am. Can you stop or the mobile or laptop? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Can you try doing it now? Hello. 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 Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. Same problem. Is it okay now? Same problem. No, same problem. So do you want me to close it and do it again? Yeah, I think that's better. Yeah, I think that's better. Yeah, okay, thanks for solving this problem. <coughs> and now you can see this uh, slide uh, for the one more uh, use case. Uh, you have uh, any idea of uh, uh, sensor data? No. no right? so when flight is flying at that point of time, it will store the data of sensor data. In this slide you can see the one flight, each flight can store 10 terabyte of data in 30 minutes of flying time. Just think uh, how many flights are flying every day in the world world, how much terabyte sensor data is storing in the servers. And here the New York Stock Exchange is also generating more than one terabyte of data every single day. Okay, so uh, this, this is the different use cases you can visualize uh, what is the big data, why everybody is looking for big data solutions. Okay. In this case, uh, this huge amount of data is generating every minute and every hour. So, obviously, when, when we are going to process the data, storing the data, uh, the current systems and current uh, solutions uh, is not possible, right? Yes. So, that is the reason uh, everybody is looking for the huge amount of uh, big data solutions to solve the huge amount of data problem. Here you can see this is the slide, the complex data and structured data is going with like a straight line. Almost 80% of data is getting as a complex and unstructured data. Yeah. Okay. okay. So these are the different uh, things uh, we are looking to. So just now we have discussed uh, about only what is big data and uh, Reviews of big data and the different uh, use cases uh, in the real time exams, right? Mm, yeah. So, I think you, you have a, um, some little bit uh, idea of what is big data. Yes, yes, I have. Yes, right? yes. So, um, now I would like to give a brief introduction of the uh, why Hadoop, why Hadoop came to the market, how it will solve the uh, big data problems. Okay? This time not okay. giving the in depth, just I am giving only very high level introduction. Okay. Oh, just for your understanding. Okay. Okay. So still now what we have discussed, all these problems uh, can be solved with uh, one solution that is called as Hadoop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hadoop is uh, one of the uh, just it says tool which is developed in Java technologies again. Okay, uh, so this is the person name called as a top cutting. He has implemented the Hadoop uh, from the with the help of Google White Papers. Okay, he has started the Hadoop development uh, around that uh, 2003 4 onwards. Hello, okay. Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. and finally, he has released the Hadoop project uh, as a, a open source product, open source project uh, with the help of Apache Group. Okay. Okay. So in between 2004 to 2009, the, he has taken the help of uh, Yahoo, Facebook, and uh, different different companies to test the uh, multi node cluster and uh, test with the huge and amount of data also. Okay. Uh, this the Clouder is the company which can provide the certifications and the uh, uh, enterprise application level support to the companies. Okay. Okay. <coughs> So basically, the, just we have the discussion already. Just I am going to give a small discussion. A volume, velocity, velocity, and variety, right? Volume is nothing but a 
huge amount of data where it is nothing but structure, semi-structure, unstructured data. So when you, once you come to the velocity, velocity means it's, it will work in the batch mode process, real-time streaming data process within the mm. first environment. So uh, the Hadoop can be a very faster than other tools uh, in the big data area. Okay. Basically, the Hadoop is a completely open source. That is the reason it's getting more fam familiar than other tools. Okay. Okay. It's completely open source, so you can directly download the uh, whoa, Hadoop um, software and you can install it and you can work with your system. That much easy here. Oh. And it's again distributed architecture. I will let you know what is distributed architecture. Mm, it will be a uh, like this, distributed architecture is nothing but there will be one machine it will be treated as a master machine. There will be a oh. n number of oh, slave machines are there. This can be called as a distributed architecture or master slave architecture or you can call it as a cluster environment. There are different names. Okay. Yeah, so you data yeah. can process in faster ways. Okay. Yeah, master, these are the slave one, slave two like this. These are the one in rabbit. So Hadoop is a completely distributed technology. Okay. Okay. And it will work with the batch processing. Okay. Okay. And here for the Hadoop, we need not go for the very high level, high end hardware requirements. You can simply get the very low level and the commodity hardware is also working with Hadoop while installing the new machines. Okay, and next one is the <coughs> scalability architecture. It's, it can be a scale up at any point of time. You know, do, do you have any idea about scaling the data, scaling the system, scaling the scaling is nothing but increasing the capacity of something. Here we can increase okay. the new mission. If the four missions are not sufficient, maybe after one year time the data is getting very huge. I want to increase the missions. Simply, I can increase the mission. New machines also can increase the existing net uh, distributed architecture very easily without getting any problem. But in the previous architectures, it was very big deal. But nowadays, it's very easy in the Hadoop architecture. Okay. okay. Yeah, I will explain what are the challenges are there in the distributed architecture. How the okay. Hadoop is solved all those things in the classes. Okay. Okay. And it's completely fault tolerant and high availability. So in the Hadoop, there is a replication concept is there. With the help of replication concept, the data, each data will be stored in the based on the replication factor. By default, it is three. So the copy of the data will be copied into three different nodes with the same data. So sometimes maybe one data is one node is failed, the same data will be available in some other two machines. So always it will be high available and it's completely 100% fault. Okay, and one more good feature of the Hadoop is the moving computation. Moving computation is nothing but uh, the data will not move from the data area to application area. Here the application is going to uh, move to the data area and it will solve the problem. It will compute the data. Okay. This is a moving to computation. Like that uh, in the previous uh, one, so let's take this is application server here running. Maybe the data is available in the some database servers. Okay. Just a moment. Okay. Hello. Yeah, sorry, Vishal. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, by, with the help of replication factor, we can uh, work with uh, all these things. And uh, the moving competition, I think, but yes, I'm explaining moving competition, right? So, the application server will get the data from the database, data area. Here it will copy. And the once, you, once it is processed, then it will send the updated data to the data, and it will send to the client also, right? 
Okay. But here in Hadoop, this data and application both will be in a single mesh. Okay. okay. Uh, wherever the data is there, the application will be, software will be copied to the uh, system nodes, uh, then it will execute in the same system. So, then it will be very faster than uh, other systems, right? Yes. So, these are the very uh, good features of the Hadoop. Okay? Okay. As of now, any uh, doubts or any clarifications required? No, 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 this is... You are getting, right? Now, just I would like to give a uh, art, uh, high level architecture of the Hadoop ecosystem. Okay. Now, basically, <coughs> Hadoop is a framework. Hadoop is, a, do you have any idea about what is exactly framework? No. Okay. It's a framework which is developed in Java technologies. Framework is nothing but uh, uh, once you create some set of rules and regulations and uh, uh, we will create some uh, library files. Uh, okay, okay. So, yeah, all these libraries will be used, used for, by the someone to create their own application or their own framework. In Hadoop, okay. Okay. So, it's like a framework, Hadoop is also one framework. They have created some particular rules and they have created some libraries like a jar files and other files. Okay. okay. With the help of those files, we can create our own application or our, we can create our own framework. That is the, just call it framework. Okay. okay. The basically the entire Hadoop is developed in Java technology. That is the reason many people will think about, uh, if you know Java, then only you can learn Hadoop. Mm, yes, yes. So, but not like that. But if you have the Java knowledge, it will be advertised again. Okay. Okay. So in the Hadoop box, uh, there are two important components are there. These two will be, actually the Hadoop is nothing but only these two components. One is the HDFS and the second one is the map and choose. Yeah. Okay, these two are the components. HDFS is nothing but Hadoop distributed file system. Okay, which is uh, derived from Google file system. Okay. Okay. This, this is only for storing the data. Okay. And second component is the map reduce. Map reduce is nothing but useful for process the data. Okay. Okay. See here in a single Hadoop box, we are having storing capacity, storing possibility is there and the processing or computation is also there, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so here the HDFS is having a completely different uh, file system. Okay, uh, it will, it is, the data will be stored in the blocks of data and it, the, will, each block will be uh, configurable and there are different uh, things are there in HDFS, this is a little bit different from the other file systems, okay, which can be stored the data. And once you store the data from other machines to Hadoop HDFS, we need to process it, right? Yes. For processing the data here, one, if you use the map reduce, you need to write the Java programs. You need to write three Java programs here. One is mapper, producer, and a driver class. These three uh, Java classes you need to write. Okay. Okay. So here you need to use the Java. If you have the Java knowledge, you can write these three programs and you can uh, do the whatever the required required process. Mm. Okay. But nowadays these three programs uh, can be developed in the other languages also, not only Java. You can write to Python, Scala, Ruby on Rails, Java scripting and different other languages also available which can be implemented. Okay. Okay. The, 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 it, it will be having a very good concept of how the process is going on internal and everything. Okay. After a couple of years, uh, some other components came to the Hadoop ecosystem like big and high. high. Okay. The basically the big and high is the it's a Latin scripting language. Mm. Okay. So and the high is then basically it's a SQL notation language. Okay. Okay. So in your case it will be advantage now. 
okay as you know in the software industry mostly 20 to 30 percent of the people only knows about java and java technologies right i mean people with, uh, are there from different different uh, uh, technologies and uh, architectural yes. part and uh, analytical part and management part different uh, areas of people are there right in the software industry yes. so uh, everybody cannot learn java everybody i mean even many of the people don't want to learn java and try work with a huge amount of lines of code right mm, yes so those type of people can work with big and high this is the advantage so in your okay. case even if you have java knowledge then you can learn it and you can write it or else you can write the same thing in big and high also okay okay the big and high is derived from facebook and yahoo this pick is from Yahoo and Hive is from Facebook. They have implemented okay. these tools they, for their own internal purpose. After that, they have donated to the Hadoop uh, ecosystem. That means Apache group. The Apache group is integrated with the Hadoop box. Then we can call it as a ecosystem. Ecosystem is nothing but sub-projects of the Hadoop. Okay. These uh, HTFS, MapReduce, Peak and Hive, these are, can be called as a Hadoop ecosystem. Okay. Okay. In our course, we'll discuss uh, the uh, some of the brief discussion of the big data again, and uh, we'll discuss the Hadoop. What is the uh, what exactly Hadoop? What are the features and what are the disadvantages and advantages? How Hadoop is capturing market? After that, we'll start with the uh, how to install the software, how to configure the software. Everything uh, you can do it uh, in your mission. I will guide you through online. You can do it. I, I will make you as a very familiar with the installation also. Okay. So after that, we'll start with the HDFS. Okay. And after that, we'll start with the MapReduce. HDFS and MapReduce will take more than 40 to 50 percent of the time in the course. Okay. Okay. Once you complete these two things, then we can start with the pick and hive. The pick and hive is nothing but map reduce only. In the back end, once you write any one, two lines of pick script, or maybe two lines of hive script, hive SQL language, by default, these two lines will be converted as a Java program of map reduce. Again, internally, map reduce framework will take care. Yeah. And again, it will work with the on top of HTTPS data. The same thing will happen, but in the developer point of view, you need not worry about how to write these Java programs, how to execute Java programs in HTFS. You need not worry. Everything will be taken care by framework. You need to write only the scripts and the SQL notations okay. for the analytical purpose. So the thing you are teaching me is for the uh, developer point of view, right? Yeah, developer point of view. So, how about the analytics point then? Yeah, the, once you de developer point of view is nothing but <coughs> analytics part also will come under here, high one of peak. Okay. okay. Right. So, you are an architect, right? Sorry? Uh, are we done with the class? No, 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 just in another five minutes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, it's okay. not at completion. So, few, three more things are there in the Hadoop ecosystem. I'm going to explain those things. Along with Pig and Hive, we have the scoop is there, and we have the flow, and we have the hedge base. These are the three more components are there within the Hadoop box. Okay, scoop will be the one more tool which can be access the data between SQL systems to SQL database systems to Hadoop systems. We cannot directly uh, copy the data from SQL to Hadoop. Hmm. So, Scoop is the one tool which can be uh, get the data and uh, save the data in the SQL. Scoop is nothing but SQL Hadoop. The first two letters will be SQL, the last three letters of the Hadoop. That can be a Scoop. Okay. Okay. So, an another one is the Flume. Uh, the Flume will be one more tool which can be useful when you are dealing with streaming data. <coughs> if you take that, do you have any idea about log files? Log files? No. No? Yeah. Log files is, will be generate the data where you keep on generating the data. It will store the data. And if you take the, any movie or any cricket match, the data will be keep on storing, right? Okay. That type of data can be uh, copied and can be stored with the help of Flume tool. Okay? okay? 
the data which is streaming continuously the data can be cannot be copied manually every time every one minute or every two minutes it will be very difficult with the flume tool uh, we can configure it it will be copy the data continuously from the streaming data okay okay and next one is I, I will explain very clearly just I'm giving brief only and next one is the HBase HBase is the it's a one of the no SQL database no SQL yeah you have SQL right Yes. Now the market is capturing with no SQL databases only. There are many new SQL databases are there like HBase, Cassandra, MongoDB and there are some different more than 100 databases are available. So HBase is the one of the no SQL database <coughs> which can be integrated with Hadoop. Okay. okay. In our course we will discuss the uh, overview and the overview of the HBase also. Okay. How to create the tables, how to install it, how to work with HBase. Okay. 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 So these these are the seven topics are the very very important and we'll concentrate. Along with this, we'll discuss the some of the topics yeah. like Zookeeper and OG. Some of the small small topics are there. We'll discuss while we are going to discuss in the H base and other things. Sure. Okay. So the most of the analytical part will be covered in the high school big and H base related things. Okay. So once you have the idea of, of HTFS and the MapReduce concept, then only you can concentrate on the analytical part. Oh, okay. 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 So directly you cannot uh, get into the analytical. Even if you want to do the analytical part, you need to know uh, what is the Hadoop, how HDFS is uh, uh, configured, and how the data is stored, how data is processing. Then you can uh, do the analytics. Okay. Okay. So in, in our class, you will be teaching me on both the developer point of view and also on the analytical point yeah, of view. Yeah, analytical point of view in a high one big area. Okay, do you have the course curriculum with you? Yes, I have, yeah, you can take it from Scalar IT. Okay, I just okay, needed this IT. course curriculum once to see what it is. No, I will follow their curriculum only. I am dealing with the different institutes. I will follow the institutes curriculum only. Okay. Okay. I will with the class, sir. I need, I have few questions to ask. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Almost I am done. Uh, just uh, this is the high level architect of the uh, Hadoop ecosystem. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So almost uh, done. The just I would like to show one more slide. Uh, can be uh, this is the. Uh, are you able to see this one? Yes, yes. Uh, these yes, are sir. the companies. Uh, uh, they have developed their own product on top of uh, Hadoop. Yes, the Hadoop is an open source, right? So yes. somebody should be there once you implement the Hadoop, once you are in the uh, production level. So now the different companies are providing their own uh, uh, enterprise applications on top of Hadoop uh, to support in the production level. See, they are, these are the companies. Cloudera is the one of the companies starting from starting point onwards in Hadoop. HP, Amazon, Web Service, IBM, okay. Microsoft, these are the all big companies are putting a lot of investment on top of Hadoop big data area. Yes, yes. Okay, so the, the market will be very huge in the year of 2015 on big data. Okay. okay? Yes. So this is the just a brief introduction of uh, uh, big data and Hadoop. Uh, if you have any questions, you can proceed. Okay, so you are Hadoop architect, right? Yes. Uh, so according to a non-technical point of view, uh, what is the best suggestion you could give me? Uh, for what? Uh, uh, like which part of Hadoop should I go for? Yeah, and based on your experience also, you have only two years of experience, right? Yeah, I have no experience on Hadoop at all. Yeah, yeah, you so, don't have. Even the person is having more than five years of experience in industry, then um, based on their experience, they can uh, choose maybe Hadoop administrator or Hadoop architecture or Hadoop development like that. But yeah, you have only one up to two years of experience. Better to go with the development. Development is a good option. Yeah, development. You, once you come, once you are getting the development, you can concentrate more on the analytical part. 
So you mean to say the analytical is more tougher than development? No, 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 more not more tougher. If you, do, if you want to do analytical, you need to learn all these things also. Okay. Okay. But some of the topics will be coming within the uh, this area. Uh, when I am explaining the high one other things, I will give you the more explanation on analytical part. What exactly? Oh. Analytics. Okay. Okay. So do I have to talk to that person and take the uh, curriculum to see what they are teaching? Yeah. I or else uh, you tell me what exactly you want in. Uh, particular Hadoop architect uh, Hadoop course so where exactly you want to uh, concentrate so like, more I will concentrate more on particular that area uh, by taking one hour extra time separately to you okay okay sir to be very frank I have no idea you know what it is and, and all that if something related to electricals or something then I can specify you saying you know this part I am weak and I want like more uh, info on that and all yeah. But as I told you, I'm very much new to IT. I don't know where it starts and where it ends. Also, I don't know what the contents in it. Yeah, sure. So, I, I will guide you in for the technical part of just getting the some knowledge on Java and other things also. As you know, SQL, and I I will give you the some of the SQL related stuff also to get into the more knowledge in SQL. Okay. Oh, cool. RDBMS and other things. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Any more questions? Ah, uh, that's not. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Vishal.